In a momentous event in the field of astrophysics, SpaceX successfully launched the Euclid Space Telescope into orbit to map the dark universe like never before. And of course, the European spacecraft launched from a US broomstick, SpaceX's Falcon 9, which happens to be the best rocket in the world right now. Let's go over the minute details of this extraordinary launch in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Everything began at 11.12 a.m. EDT Saturday when a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket roared to life at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. After a lightning-fast round of computer checks, the rocket was released to climb away atop 1.7 million pounds of thrust, putting on a spectacular weekend sky show for area residents and tourists. 41 minutes later, after two firings of the rocket's second stage engine, Euclid was released to fly on its own. The Falcon 9 its first stage, as usual for SpaceX, flew itself to landing on an offshore drone ship. Notably, the European Space Agency, or ESA, had been gearing up to launch the Euclid Space Telescope last year on a Russian Soyuz rocket taking off from Kourou, French Guiana. But in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, those plans fell apart, leaving Euclid without a ride to space. Last July, ESA approached SpaceX about possibly launching on the company's Falcon 9 rocket. By the end of the year, contracts were in place and the team was able to proceed to Saturday's launch. It was a really fantastic launch. This is a very important mission for the European Space Agency, ESA Director General Joseph Oschbacher at a post-launch briefing said. We owe them a huge thanks. Without them, our satellite would be sitting on the ground for two years, Mike Healy, head of science projects at ESA, said of SpaceX before the launch. The first discussions with SpaceX were in May of 2022, he said, followed by feasibility studies and testing to ensure Euclid was compatible with the Falcon 9. While ESA announced in October its intent to launch Euclid and another mission, Hera, on the Falcon 9, the agency did not sign a final contract with SpaceX until the end of January. We had to squash what we normally do in three years into five months, he said of the switch to the Falcon 9. That required dealing with a number of challenges ranging from technical issues of integrating the spacecraft with the rocket to dealing with U.S. export control policies. I'm very happy with the relationship we have with SpaceX. They are incredibly skilled in problem solving. It's a most valuable experience, Giuseppe Rocca, Euclid project manager at ESA, said before the launch. The 4,760-pound or roughly 2,159-kilogram space telescope is equipped with a near-perfect 3 feet 11-inch wide primary mirror and two instruments, a 600 megapixel visible light camera and a 64 megapixel infrared imaging spectrometer. The telescope's field of view is roughly twice the size of the full moon. Euclid is bound for a region in space roughly a million miles from Earth, Lagrange Point 2 where the gravity of the Sun and Earth combine to form a quiescent region where spacecraft can remain in space with minimal maneuvering and fuel usage. The James Webb Space Telescope also operates at the L2 point. After a month-long checkout and calibration period, Euclid will begin mapping 15,000 square degrees of sky, or in this case, space, which includes all the space outside the Milky Way galaxy, imaging galaxies and clusters of galaxies dating back 10 billion years. That will capture the transition from the universe's initial gravity-driven deceleration to the era of accelerated expansion under the emerging dominance of dark energy. Euclid can, in one go, offer a field much larger than accessible by Hubble, said René Larege, ESA's Euclid project scientist. During its entire lifetime, Hubble did not cover more than 100 square degrees, and this can be done by Euclid in 10 days. So, in order to get our 15 thousand square degrees, which is the size of our sky survey, we need these big images off of the sky. By studying subtle changes in the light from galaxies over the past 10 billion years, Euclid's cameras will help scientists find out if dark energy is consistent with an unchanging cosmological constant once predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity or whether the current understanding of gravity needs revision. 
Yannick Millier, an astronomer at the Institute of Astrophysics of Paris and a member of the Euclid science team, put it like this. The objective of the Euclid mission is to provide answers to the following questions. Why is expansion of the universe accelerating, which translates into what is the nature of dark energy? Is it a cosmological constant? Is it a dynamical dark energy with properties that may vary with time? Or is it a deviation to general relativity on cosmological scales? At the same time, Euclid also will study the nature of dark matter, a sea of particles that do not emit or reflect light or any other electromagnetic radiation, but whose gravitational effects are clearly seen. Dark matter keeps galaxies from flying apart and influences how galaxies have evolved and clustered over the 13.7 billion years since the Big Bang. Indeed, the successful launch and deployment of the Euclid spacecraft represents a monumental leap forward in our cosmic journey, opening doors doors to unprecedented discoveries and transforming our understanding of the universe. It embodies the collaborative spirit of international space exploration and the tireless dedication of scientists, engineers, and visionaries who strive to unravel the profound mysteries that surround us. With the Euclid mission now in full swing, scientists and researchers around the world eagerly await the invaluable data and insights it will provide. The historic achievement stands as a testament to human curiosity curiosity, and our unwavering determination to unlock the secrets of the universe pushing the boundaries of knowledge and shaping the course of our cosmic exploration. However, while SpaceX's Falcon 9 is experiencing a remarkable surge, the rest of the rocket industry finds itself engulfed in a crisis. Europe is preparing to say goodbye to Ariane 5 on its 117th and final mission to space, which is expected to launch Tuesday from Kourou, French Guiana, which will carry a French military military communications satellite and an experimental German satellite. The director of the Guiana Space Center, Marie Anne Claire, said the launch will be charged with emotions for the personnel of the center, which has been associated with the rocket for the past three decades. The CEO of the National Center for Space Studies, Philippe Baptiste, confirmed that the rocket was an amazing human adventure. From a commercial point of view, the rocket was a progressive element in the space field in Europe, according to the European Space Agency's Director of Space Transport, Daniel Neuschwander. Twelve countries participated in the manufacturing of the heavy lift vehicle, which replaced the Ariane 4 with a launch capacity doubled from it, a competitive advantage that enabled Europe to establish itself in the communications satellite market. Europe also benefited from a respite from the United States, Neuschwander said, as the US space shuttle monopolized the market. We are currently witnessing the opposite situation, he added as Europe finds itself almost denied independent access to space. This is due to the sudden cessation of the use of Russian Soyuz rockets after the Ukrainian crisis in February of 2022, which reduced the activity of the Koro base, which witnessed only six launches in 2022, compared to 15 similar launches during the year prior. Exacerbating the situation is the failure of the first commercial launch of the Italian Vega C vehicle in December of 2022 and the cumulative delays for the future of Ariane 6. It's quite a difficult time. After all, Elon Musk's SpaceX stands as the sole solution for them now. But don't worry, Europe. We're here for you. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about what's going on in the world of space exploration. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the Patreon link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.